All right. So I've, I've been doing this for a long time, and uh, when I started working here, the way that I started working with recons was basically like, here's 100 recons that we need to get done in a month or so. Have fun. And that's kind of the best way that you can learn, honestly. Uh, so the purpose of this talk is to show you the tricks and tips that I've come to learn over my time here. Hopefully make it easy for you. Um, and, but the important thing to stress is that what I do is what I found works for me. You might find something helps you go faster. Your study might be focused on something completely different where you can have a different strategy. And we'll sort of talk about some of those scenarios. And feel free to ask me about them as well. Well, if I'm doing a study on this, then what should I focus on? And I'm happy to answer those, uh, especially over the next couple of days. Um, uh, as an example, I learned to look at these recons in the coronal plane. That's just how I was taught, and so that's how I do it. Uh, but I understand that a lot of people are much more used to the axial plane. So please, look at your recons, check them in, in that view. The problems are going to pop out at you much quicker that way. Um, as someone that has had to spend a lot of time um, fixing recons and trying to make them look better, Yes, I wanted shortcuts. I wanted ways to make it go faster. Uh, so I'm happy to share those with you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is take a case and go through it like I would if I was checking it. You are welcome to ask questions throughout. If you can't see what I'm pointing at or what I'm referring to, because I know the screens are, um, are, are sort of different in contrast there, and, and it's, I can try and zoom in. Just let me know. Uh, I'll try and point out with a laser pointer or something. Um, so this is topo defect before. This is the subject that came with the tutorial data. So if you got to that part of the tutorial, you may have already found the error in this case and fixed it and, and learned a little bit about that. And we will go over that error. But um, as I think Bram mentioned yesterday, in all of this tutorial data we gave you, we we're pointing out maybe one example, but there might be other errors as well. Um, you know, and so I'll, I'll go through and I'll point out things that I might be concerned about to fix and sort of review how to fix them. So I tend to start just like this, coronal. Uh, I often have the ASEG on, layered on top at the same time, and I check both the ASEG and the surfaces at the same time. I want to say that that's not how I started out. I started out just having to focus on only one thing at a time. It was a little too overwhelming, so I don't blame you if you do the same thing. Uh, so when I first started, I would go through the entire brain, check the surfaces, fix what I could, then put the ASIC on, and then check just that. What I will say, though, is that if you have the ASIC on when you're checking the first time through, sometimes it tips you off you know, about something that might not be right. So if it, you know... When you get to the point where maybe it's not too overwhelming to have all this loaded at once, um, then it, it could actually be useful to you. So, if I go through, and what I will say is also the areas where it tends to need the most attention, uh, which is certainly the temporal lobes. They tend to have... Uh, some more errors, if, you know, if there's going to be any, it's probably going to be there. Um, part of the reason is, right, it's further from the coil. It has less signal. It might not, um, the service might not catch everything there if the intensity is not as even, uh, even though it tries to correct for that. So what I usually do is do one pass through and not even look at the temporal lobes until uh, a second pass because there tends to be um, too much to distract there. So as I go forward... And I actually go a little bit quicker than that. Again, I didn't. I just went back a little bit. I didn't start going that quickly. Um, I actually started going to one slice and looking at every little inch of the screen to make sure that there's nothing wrong, and then figuring out what to fix, and then moving to the next slice. But I do not recommend that. <laughs> Aside from the fact that that will drive you crazy, um, it actually it's not going to increase your accuracy. Um, in the end sort of the flow of going from slice to slice, that's going to help you identify the errors much easier. They're going to pop out at you. You might end up 
if you're looking at just one slice at a time and focusing on that, correcting things that don't need to be corrected. Because then you get to the next couple of slices and you realize, oh, that was actually part of this other thing. Or, oh, it disappears on the next slice. Maybe I don't even have to do it. So uh, even if I see something that, that's like, oh, maybe I should um, fix that, I'll still kind of go quickly um, through the adjacent slices and then go back to see if it's something I actually need to be concerned about. So I pause on this slice because there is something that I think is wrong. But I didn't tell you guys, there's going to be a quiz. If you can tell me, if anyone's willing to tell me what they think is wrong in this image. And I know it's a little hard to see. And there's probably like 10 things wrong, I'll tell you that. But, but I'm thinking about one thing. So use your psychic abilities in addition to the skills that you've learned so far. Yeah? I can take a stab at this, but I don't know if I'm correct. Does it have to do with some of the white matter being excluded around the corpus callosum? You know what? I have a trick for this. Is it like these areas here where some of the white matter is excluded? Okay. The answer is no. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to come back to say why, but not yet. Over here, yeah. in that area. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So it's it's um for recording sake. Uh, this is the area I was thinking of. But did anyone see anything else? All right. You might have a few more. I'm gonna have to edit this one after. But I'm just looking at the white matter. Ah, interesting. So my answer to that is I don't know. But all the other slices. Exactly. Yeah, look at the other slices, but we'll do that. Did you have a question? No, it's still really good. Ah, yeah. Don't you feel better already? You got this? Anything else? All right. See, so you're already experts. Um, so the, the first response was at this. And, you know, I said no, and that wasn't exactly fair. Like, yeah, that's not accurate. That's not correct. But if you remember um, Bruce's slides for the troubleshooting talk, the midline, we just mask out. And we don't include in any of our calculations of um, volume or thickness because you can't do anything there. So you're right. It's not accurate, but it's not something we're concerned about. So you get half credit, you know. <laughs> um, but... Uh, this is what I was thinking of, and someone else pointed out this, which is also correct. Um, so I'm going to go into w how you know what to fix there, and also um, how to be sure that it's something to fix. So first, how are we sure that that's something to fix? Um, for sure, the assessment here should be, okay, this is something that is not gray matter, that seems to be pulling out the surface that should be surrounding the gray matter further than the actual gray matter, right? The actual gray matter stops here. Uh, but you might say, I'm not an anatomy expert. How am I going to know that that's not gray matter? Or there's a few answers to that. One is that you just keep looking at brains and you see enough brains, you just learn what's what. Uh, and that's the honest to goodness truth. I didn't come into here and most of the people we hire don't necessarily come in with anatomy experience. But I give them five cases for the first week, look through here, follow the tutorials, see what you can figure out, and, and that's how they learn. Uh, the ASEG is a pretty good teacher for what, what is uh, what in the brain. Um, the other part of it is you have um, BERT. Anytime you install FreeSurfer, you get the subject BERT for free. Well, everything's for free, right? But uh, BERT's in there, and you can use BERT as an example case. So if there's any time you're not sure, and you're saying like, oh, is this some part of anatomy I care about or not? Should this be included or not? You can open BERT and look in the same region and then say, oh, okay, it's not including the surface in BERT, so probably it shouldn't be including the surface here. And that's how you get to learn anatomy and, you know, sort of on the cheap, on the quick. So here, I've now looked at enough brains. I know that this is something... Um, that shouldn't be included, you know, and often in this area, you'll see it here, there's blood vessel there, <laughs> it tends to pull the surface out. But how can I be sure where I should erase? Um, so I 
suggest anytime you're about to make an edit to definitely play with the window in. See if I had it this bright, it's pretty distinct, but when I go like this, it's like, okay, I see exactly what I need to remove. It's a lot easier. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is you sort of end on this, you know, sort of level of brightness and contrast. You move through to next slices, and you might say, oh, aha, I see more, and start removing stuff. Definitely remember to window it back up before you remove more, because here's a good example over here. You might end up removing more than, than you intend to, and so it's good to, to window it back up so you can see the full context before you start removing things. Okay, so now I found the error. What, what file should I manipulate? Um, and if you remember from Bruce's slides, he had the little cheat sheet in there. So print it out, put it on your desk. These are the words to live by. Um, if the peel surface <coughs> includes too much, which is what we have here, you're going to edit the brain mask. Uh, and this is, this is just always going to be true, but as you get to know the free surface output and in the order in which it's generated, this will become more intuitive. Oh, OK, the brain mask was created to be able to create the surfaces. Um, so if I manipulate the brain mask, now the surfaces uh, this peel surface specifically will improve. So now to the fun part. As you've already learned in the tutorial, you want to hit this recon edit button and you get some options. And you want to erase, which is shift left. And if I was doing it, this is what I would erase. Um, you might notice that I didn't do stuff in there, but now we're talking <coughs> about the window. And again, if I window up, maybe, like they're, these are brighter than, than this, but am I certain that that's not gray matter or, you know, um, uh, partial volume voxel, voxel there? Uh, I'm not. And if you're not certain about something, just leave it be. And the, the reason here is, okay, when I rerun Free Surfer, and, and that's important, is once you make your edits, you do have to rerun it. You have to start the process again because you have to take this file that you've manipulated and say, okay, now given this new file that where I've removed the errors or I've added the things that need to be added, make the services so that they follow this information. So when it follows, uh, when it takes this and it follows this information, the service is going to come here. But now you, you've removed these really bright intensities. It, it's going to, it's still smart. It's going to figure out, okay, what's the best place to go? And it can decide, well, maybe I should ignore these bright ones here. And maybe it won't. But this is also, again, one slice. So as you remove what you're sure about and all the sli other slices, and if you kind of do that thing where you scroll back and forth really quickly, it, you know, the picture will become clear to you as well. Like, oh, okay, the services are probably going to move just the right amount, even if I'm leaving in, you know, three voxels I'm not sure about. So when Boo said earlier, you know, if it's, in, you know, if you're not sure, if it's ambiguous, just leave it. That's really the best advice. So I moved it on that slice, but is that enough? <coughs> no, you have to do it on every slice, right? If you move it on just that slice, will the surface nudge? It might. But again, when the surface is created, you know, it's, it's over the 3D image, and so one slice might not make a difference. Keep that in mind, because when you go through and you feel, um, you know, you get that perfectionist vibe, you're like, I'm going to remove every single voxel that's completely wrong, it doesn't belong here. You know, removing one voxel on one slice, it's not going to make a difference, right? It's not going to make a difference in your measurements. So uh, that's another thing where people tend to spend more time on it than they need to, because they're, they're going for perfection. And you might not hear this any other time in your life. You're going for the least amount of work you could do here. So do the least amount that you have to do to get good surfaces. And I think that's the best thing. I think that's what's going to keep you sane. So here in this slice, oops, go back to recon edit mode. I already moved these. So there is this imperfection here. And, you know, and, and we already touched on what's accurate versus what do you need to do. So, of course, this is not accurate. 
but I probably don't need to do anything here. It's so tiny. I removed this one voxel. It, it's probably already going to be fixed from the other slices I've edited. So I might leave that. Now I'm going to go backwards to make sure I got the slice on the other side. And I get to here. This side? Yep. I'll do this one too. Yep. Quick question. So when, yeah, when you're doing these edits, are you just going one slice before and one slice after? That's a good question. So you don't need to continue? Or? So the question is, um, when you're doing these edits, do you go just one slice before the error and one slice after? Um, what I would say is you, you go a few slices before and after, um, and you may only need to edit bef one slice before and after. It depends. And um, it, it's not, it doesn't happen as often, but it can be the case that you edit something on three slices, and then three slices are fine, and then the next three slices, the error pops up again. And those are usually sort of more complex errors that have to do with data being um, not necessarily, not of high quality, but it could be that, the, you know, there's some kind of problem in the data, like a tumor is there, and so, it, you know, a server is just doing the best it can, and you have to kind of jump in at different spots. So, so you, you do have to kind of look for a completeness, but yeah, typically it's going to be like one to three slices before and after need to be fixed. So here, I don't know about you guys, but I have a hard time. I'm sitting here thinking like, well, I can see this line because I'm used to seeing that line from the other, the other slice. So should I just chop that away? But hey, wait, this is, this is gray. Like this is gray. Is this gray better? I don't know. So again, do the least amount, do what you're sure about, and don't forget to, to window to see if that can tell you what to do. So I make it darker, and this pops out at me. And when I was here, that was the only part I was really feeling sure about. So that's all I'll do. So I'll remove just that. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. So I'm focusing just on this area for now. That looks good to me. Um, so I, I'm not sure how easy it is to see. Here I move that, and this looks okay to me. Looks fine. I'm not a fan of these three, but I'm just going to leave it. And I got that. You can argue that this and this should be removed. You could. I'm just going to play it, um, play it cautious. And I'm done. So I envision that when FreeSurfer uh, reruns to fix this, the surface will go you know, down here. It will move to there. This will move up. And what I actually expect is that it won't just move from here to here. I think now that I got rid of this bright part, the surface will actually move into here. I think you know this is part gray matter, part CSF. And so the surface will probably partially go into there um, now that the brightest voxels are removed. And you can even see the hint of that here. There's that little <laughs> little hint of a peel surface right there. Um, and for this issue uh, over here, it's same strategy as the other one, same file that you edit, right? The peel surface is including too much, so you edit the brain mask. Um, this one is a little harder to me because there's just this, this line that's dark here. Um, it doesn't look like this is actually anatomy. It looks like something, you know, just the way that the image came off the scanner, there's this one sort of unnatural part here. So it, it makes it a little bit harder to me anyway to, to decide what should be removed. So again, I would remove the obvious parts, which would be here. 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 So this is where it starts to get harder. I might not remove that. I think I would keep that there and only remove these bright parts. So in, in terms of um, errors and what you tend to see, this is the most common error you'll see throughout your data. You'll see the services being pulled on either side. You can see it happening over here as well. And you'll see it you know, down in the same region. And these probably take the most time because they're running so many slices, it happens in all your subjects. Uh, so what do you do? You know, and, and here's where we come back to, like, well, what do you need to do? What's the important thing in your study? A um, couple of things to consider. If 
you don't care about that particular region at all, maybe it doesn't matter to you that it's just um, slightly thicker there. Um, if you're taking global thickness across 500 subjects and they all have something like that, well, does it actually matter if you edit it out of all 500 subjects? It might not. And you can, you know, you can always sort of test this and take a couple subjects and, you know, do bigger studies to see if it matters if you edit. I know that that's a lot more time, so I'm not necessarily suggesting it, but uh, you could if you're, you're really concerned. Um, you know, if, if all you're doing is, is getting services so that you can project fMRI data on it, do you care that that's, you know, two to three millimeters thicker there just to see fMRI on, um, uh, results on the surface? Probably not. So decide for you what you're trying to do, what your goal is. Do you need to even spend the time editing that kind of error? So is it accurate? No. Do you need to edit it? Sort of up to you. Okay. So I'm going to continue going through the brain. And, and I know I'm skipping over it, but this is all part of the same error that we saw before. So same thing applies about whether or not you should edit it. I will say that it tends to be something like this for a lot of the slices, where it's just like the surface is going through half uh, of this uh, errant voxel there. So if I remove that picture, where will the surface move? Not really, anywhere. So it's not worth your time. Like, I wouldn't remove that voxel. Uh, this is the anterior portion of the brain, the front of the brain. And I tend to go through it much quicker than um, uh, other parts of the brain for a few reasons. Well, it's sort of smaller on the screen. My eyes can kind of see everything that's going on all at once. Uh, but also, there tends to be less errors here. So I go through that pretty quick, and then I go backwards. Yep. Uh, I was wondering, is there a reason why the, mostly of the error is located in the frontal cortex? I was thinking about the susceptibility of the magnetic field. Is something related to that? For, for what part, sorry? The, uh, the orbitofrontal cortex. I have seen that mostly of the error are related to the orbitofrontal cortex. So I was wondering whether this is related to the susceptibility of the magnetic field, so or is just a random error. Actually, uh, I don't know if um, Paul might actually be able to answer a better call. You probably didn't hear the question. Do you mind repeating it for, for Paul? Yeah, actually. Uh, I have seen that most of the errors are related to the orbital frontal cortex. So I was wondering whether or not uh, this is related to the susceptibility of the magnetic field or is just a random effect that you have seen in this tutorial. Um, so the supermagnetic is actually the overall front head. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's still the Okay. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for sitting in my talk. Very useful. Um, so, now I'm going to head backwards through the brain. And again, I tend to go fairly quickly here. Now you might see some things that aren't great, and you can shout them out if you want. I'll point out some of them quickly like that, of course, doesn't look great, and so I might remove it. But here is like, you know, where you can spend hours sort of thinking about and debating. This is bright. It obviously looks like it doesn't belong, but it's not bright underneath. And you start arguing with yourself, okay, well, if I remove that, will the surface move up? Is, is there a gray matter in there? I'm not sure. Now, you, you can talk to people who... Um, are in your lab that have anatomy expertise that might be able to weigh in on what it actually is. You can make your own decision based on all the other cases you've seen. You, you know, you can um, chat around to figure out what other people think. But in the end, you know, if you're not sure, it's probably best off leaving it. Uh, but if you think it will really affect your results, then you, you might spend more time trying to figure out, okay, is this something I should edit out? Uh, and when I edit it out, what actually happens? So, you know, I already said that um, when someone starts in the lab and we want them to learn how to use FreeSurfer and edit recons, we give them five cases, um, and, and they work on those five cases. And then they look at the results, and, and what I actually do is I encourage them to make copies along the way. So there's the before, before they touched anything, there's a copy of the edits that they made, 
And then there's a, a separate copy that they run through FreeSurfer to see um, how the services change. And that way they can look at you know, how things evolve uh, and, and really get the, the feedback about for everything they manipulated, what actually was the, the consequence. And so if I remove something like this, and I would want to see, OK, how much did I remove and before and after? Because when you get the output, um, well, one, you might not remember every single edit you made, so it helps to have this kind of um, before and after to compare. Um, but also, you, you, it might be hard to remember what the service looked exactly like you know, before. Because this might, if you remove this, this might jump up really high. So going back. Um, this is something that you might tend to see as well. I would say that this is some white matter that is not necessarily being included in the service that should be. And so when we talk about going um, a couple of slices back and forth, you could see the white surface eventually includes it. And so you kind of have to make the assessment of, well, should the white surface be including this? Should I do something to get it to, to fix it on those slices? And it's, it's a decent number of slices. So I would generally say, you know, to fix it, especially, of course, if you care about white matter volume um, being accurate. It's a tough area. So you'll probably want to play with the brightness and contrast of it to, to sort of really understand, OK, should this be included or not? Yeah, sorry, it, does. it looks much better on my screen. Um, so let's say we decide, this is white matter. I want this included in my surface. What do we edit? So I go back to our little cheat sheet. And here, it's if it affects the white surface, and now it doesn't matter if it's including too much or including too little, um, you have two options. You edit the white matter, or you edit, add control points. Uh, and you might remember from what Bruce was talking about um, during his talk is that when you're adding control points, you are changing the intensity of that voxel. You're telling FreeSurfer that this is now at a different level. Uh, and so you, you do want to be careful with those. You don't want to put them in something that's gray matter or um, you know uh, potentially has gray matter in it. But how do you know when to do control points and how do you know when to edit the white matter? That's, that's a tough question. It's something that um, I'm going to give you sort of some rules of thumb. Um, but it'll take some experience going through it and sort of doing that thing where you're checking your results and remembering what edit you made and seeing what actually changed it the way you want. Uh, but what I will say is when you add control points, it's changing the intensity, it's going to make a pretty large change. It's going to be profound. If you edit the white matter, you can put all sorts of white matter voxels in on this white matter mask. It's not going to do that much. So, so that's to say that adding or deleting from the WM.MGZ is way more forgiving than adding control points. So you kind of can take that into your strategy. Why? Well, so if you remember the, the white matter mask, so it's not actual white matter, it's just this white matter mask, this binary mask. It's the starting point for the surfaces. Bruce had a little movie where you saw like the yellow surface start the white matter, it grew, uh, it grew and then the peel surface grew from the, the white surface. So if you, if you add a few more voxels, sure, the surface will start there, um, but it's still going to adjust based on the intensities in the image. So that being said, that's sort of your hint for, well, when do I use control points? When do I use white matter uh, edits? Well, if the problem that, that's causing the error is the intensities, then you're probably going to need to use control points, right? If the problem is the intensity and control points is what changes the intensity, that's the thing you have to use. You can add white matter to your white matter mask all day long, and you'll probably fix it a little bit, but, if, but it's going to adjust based on <coughs> the intensities, and if the intensity is not right, it won't include it. So one last thing on that is that if 
Yeah. If yeah, I feel like it's too much. But if the the pure surface, because um, you'll see here, the other thing is if the pure surface includes too little, what do you do? And that's in in here with the same sort of um, uh, tips for the white surface including too much too little. And that's because um, if the pure surface let's say is back here, and not all the way down here. You can't add control points to, like, to, to the gray matter. You can't add uh, anything to the brain mass to push the peel surface out. The only way you can manipulate the peel surface is by manipulating the white matter surface. So even if it's inaccurate um, to add to the white matter mass, you might find yourself adding voxels to the white matter mass, which are not in white matter, just to kind of give that peel surface a nudge. So, for example, if I added, let's say, that, again, the peel surface was up here. I added um, white matter voxels up here. Starting point for the white surface would be moved up a little bit. So then the starting point for the peel surface would be moved up a bit. And then it might catch the actual edge of the gray matter. So I know that was a lot. I'm happy to repeat that again later and, and show you examples as they come up. But so back to our problem here. What am I going to This well, on the right. Oh, over here? I'm going to do laser pointer tricks, sorry. <laughs> okay, so here. Uh, so the white matter is here, and then the white matter is not included. Mm -hmm. So let me turn this off. So we were looking at this, and we were saying, oh, is this white matter that's not included? So I would, like, I would never say in that slice, no, of course not. Like, anyway, when I said that earlier, it's because obviously I've done this tutorial a million times. I, I knew the answer. But here, yeah, I would go to the next couple of slices and say, oh. Yeah, it's not. And what I'm seeing is it's the eyeball. So that's probably why it's so bright, and Free Surfer didn't completely remove it, and now the surface is catching part of the eyeball, thinking it's white matter, because oh, it looks like white matter. Um, so yeah, so I would end up removing that. So for here, what am I going to do? Um, and there's a couple of ways that you, you can sort of help yourself decide, do I add white matter or do I add control points? Well, if we know that the intensity is the issue, that means we need to add control points. You can check the intensity of the white matter and see if it's below 110. Uh, so if you uh, hover with your mouse over, I'm, I'm even still in the surface, but I'm just looking at this area, which is next to the white matter part that's not being included, to get a sense of what where the values are. And so you can see down here, um, where it says brain, brain mask, the value is at 107. So that's a bit low. We're expecting to be at 110. And of course, as we, we go closer to where the suspected white matter is being excluded, um, the, that value jumps way lower. It's not surprising, right? It's being excluded from the white surface. That means free server thought it was gray matter. It's the values are within the 70s, which is typically what we expect for gray matter. So free server determined it was it was uh, gray matter. But these values are low as well. All would here we get back to 110. Here it gets sort of low again. So you know, it would be reasonable to guess, oh, this whole region is just sort of lower intensity. I actually think that this is white matter. I can tell because it seems much brighter. Uh, I know anatomy. This is this should be a certain gyrus that's there. So I want to include it. I'm going to add control points to boost these values to be um, closer to 110. So that's one scenario. I believe that's the right answer. But let's think about what the other possibility is. You could say, well, I don't know if it's control points. Before I check the intensity, maybe I want to check to see if the white matter mass needs to be fixed. So you can look at that instead. So I turn that on here. Um, and you see that the white matter mass is at least going up to where the surface is, which is a good sign. It's not including any of this. Which makes sense. We, you know, we kind of already saw that the intensities were low there. We see that here there is white matter. Um, in the WM.MGZ being including that that chunk. So I'm using um, Control W or Command W if you're on a Mac to turn off the white matter mask quick. 
So I can kind of make that assessment. Okay, so it is including what I thought was part of white matter. So it seems like there was some portion of it where Friesrefer did think that was white matter, labeled it as such, but then the surface still pushed, pushed back. Why did it do it? And I know you guys already saw in, in the tutorial that one possible ability is a topological error where a fuse server kind of cuts what it thinks is a handle. So maybe it's that, and so you start to fill in the white matter mass to connect these. You can rerun, you can see what happens. My guess is that in this situation, that won't fix it because we saw the intensities were too low. So I tried to, to play um, sort of both sides to kind of take you through the thinking. Uh, you can try and add white matter and, and see if it fixes it, sort of the, the safe way to go. But if you're sure the intensities are too low, then adding control points might be the, the right thing to do. So where to add control points? That's the fun part. Um, so I'm going to create a new point set, which the name doesn't here it doesn't matter, but ultimately you want to save it as control.dat. The template volume doesn't really matter to either, but uh, I'll do brain mass since that's what I'm using. And just like the where you do recon edit and you do left click to, to add and, and shift left to erase, the same goes for the control points. And I'm going to look for those, those voxels again where um, it was lower than 110, and where I'm pretty confident that it's not surrounded by gray matter in any direction. So this looks good to me. It looks good to me. Eh. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I pushed you too far. That's right. Uh, Good example of my sage advice that I tell all people who get started, save your edits often <laughs> as you go along. Not just because maybe free of you quits, um, and I am using the development version here, so it's already, you know, it might have some more bugs in it than the stable version that you would be using at home, so that happens a little more often, but also because you might make a bunch of edits, then move on to another type of edit, and then say, I've just done this horribly wrong. I wish I could go back. And there is an undo button. And so you can sit there and click it a whole bunch. <laughs> but if you kind of saved after every edit that you you feel good about, then you could also just, all right, exit out of here, reopen, and, and start over. All right. Where are you? So what's fun about this is you'll get to see it sort of evolve better. Like th as I go faster, doesn't that catch your eye a whole lot more? Um, so Again, you're adding control points where it's less than 110 and it's not surrounded by gray matter um, as best you can. And what I was about to say is that notice that I'm doing it within the white matter surface. I know that down here is where the part that's not being included. And so intuitively, you would think, let's put the control points down here. Boost that intensity. Problem solved. Um, but the reason why I'm not is because it's such a thin strip. If I put a, a control point here, like it's next to, you know, potentially gray matter, partially volume voxel, <coughs> almost all the way down, it, 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 things could go wrong. It, it, it's it's going to boost the intensity of gray matter, and then you might end up with surface that's even more inaccurate if it's thinking now that gray matter is also white matter. Um, so the advice is to play it safe, and there's nothing wrong with just putting the control points in voxels within the white surface that are lower than 110, that usually fixes the problem. Um, so I would do it that way, run it. If it doesn't fix the problem, then at that point I would consider maybe going a bit lower into these sort of um, skinny strands of, of white matter. Except 
if you're working with pediatric data, j just go for it. Just it's it it takes a lot more control points. It takes a lot more risky control point placement to make the pediatric data um, respond uh, well. The surface is more accurate. Yep. Uh, why? So the question is, why is that the case? Uh, I mean, there's a couple of reasons that it could be. Um, one is myelination. Uh, it's, the brain is not quite as myelinated. It's just sort of darker intensity there, even if you know it's white matter. The other thing is, it, um, in our experience at least, a lot of the coils that are being used for babies are still quite large, especially because you're trying to fit in a study with kids that are from 0 to 5, and you've got different head sizes there. So if it's a um, younger kid and the coil is quite big, it's further, further you know, the brain is further from the... the Coil elements, the signal is, is less high, and then we get this. Yep. Sorry. Uh, so, because I work with data from like eight years old up to like fifty-five. Mm -hmm. So, at what point do you think, or at what age? Yeah. Do you think that you need to be a little bit less careful. That's a good question. So the question is, at what age do you need to be um, careful versus not careful? Um, and so, from you know. Sort of what we tend to say is from five and above, you should be able to put it through the adult stream of free surfer and it worked pretty good. Um, and uh, Lilla uh, Zolai, she'll be here uh, on Thursday and she works with these data sets as well. She'll probably be able to give you more specific advice and I can point it to you. Um, it, it depends, you know, you could see different things based on the coil. I would say that under five, for sure, it's going to be a problem. Over five, I'd expect it to be okay. But I have seen data sets where, like, you know, between five and eight, it's still kind of a problem. After eight, I would think it'd be fine. Um, so one more point on the control points is I just want to show you that you don't need to put that many. So I might put one here. And this is something where, you know, I haven't brought this up, but when you are trying to fix a problem, I'm, right now I've just been doing this in the coronal view, but I wouldn't ordinarily, especially when I start um, get, just getting started, only work in one plane. I would switch between coronal, axial, um, and sagittal to get a better understanding of what this error is and, and its full context. And so same with control points. If you place them all in a coronal view and then you look in one of the other views, you'll see that you basically put them on top of each other. Um, so it helps to kind of go back and forth between um, the different views to, to see if you're placing them in a smart way that's going to have a bigger impact. So there. So I have three so far. That one, that one, that one. Correct, yeah. That's lower than 110? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not putting them in, in every voxel that's lower than 110. Don't need to. So um, since control points have such a large effect, it will boost the intensity of all the surrounding voxels, um, which is why I don't want them to be too close to gray matter. So it's going to make those 110 or close to 110, and then the ones that are next to that are going to be boosted as well, so you don't have to put as many. Um, I would go for here, and I would stop. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And it's good. It's all you need. Maybe even less. Probably could have gotten away with like three. Um, quick pause to say, you know, we talked about saving your edits as you go along. Um, you have to save any file that you have um, manipulated, so you're saving the brain mask file, or you're saving wm.mdz if you're editing that, and you're saving your control point file. And so all of those are in, in this menu. Okay. So I know we spent a lot of time on those because there was a lot of advice that was going in there. The rest of this will go a bit quicker. You kind of now have the basics about how to find these things, um, how to make a decision of how to um, manipulate them. So, as I said before, I tend to go through looking at just this and ignoring the temporal lobes the first time around because it takes more work. So, I saw a problem here. Actually, I see two problems. 
back to the quiz portion. Does anyone see the, the problems I see? No, no, go for it. I, I think we're going to Yeah. So the, the the one answer was this and, and I asked why is that um, what made her think that that was wrong and and this is a, it's a great tip. There's a little bit of peel surface in there and this is a, the white matter boundary so it shouldn't be there. Um, and so when you see the peel surface doing weird stuff like that it gets all squiggly and then um, uh, that's usually a hint that there's something uh, wrong there. And so what is the issue here? So I went to this slice, I see, okay, that's a little strange, there's a little hole there. I go here, it seems fine. So now I'm gonna go back again. That's there, that's still there. All right, that, it's gone from there, but this is that squiggliness that I referred to earlier that can also kind of catch your eye and make you think, oh, something's wrong there. And now it seems fine. So this problem is on like two slices. So this would be an error, again, where you have to sit there and say, is it worth my time? If I fix this, where will the surface move? How many voxels am I, you know, gaining accuracy? And again, depending on your study and what you're doing, this might not be worth it. Um, but I will give you the, the answer to what's going on here. Um, if you did care about this region, you wanted thickness to be accurate here. So this is where we go, go to the, where we would check the different views to get the context of what's going on. But also, I would turn the surfaces off and on. Um, it, it can be misleading when you're going through your case and you're looking at where a free surfer has placed the surfaces and you kind of just start to believe in where they place it and not necessarily see the, the inaccuracies. So control F or command F will turn the surfaces on and off very quickly. Um, and I use that all the time so that way with the surfaces off, I can decide, all right, well, where would I put that surface? Like this looks like the edge of the gray matter. And now that this sort of dark um, part here is in the white matter and sort of staying there, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, see that part right there? I'm thinking, oh, maybe there is something going on. Is this you know, an artifact? Is there um, something wrong with the, the white matter there that's causing this? And this is one of those things where it's tricky. Like it, It's here as well. And so that's why the surface is going crazy there. Now that I've gone through those couple of slices, I can see that this dark patch is traveling, sorry, wrong way, throughout the white matter and is causing that inaccuracy in the surfaces. So how do I fix it? Well, you can go, it's affecting the white surface, so that means we have two options. We, edit, uh, we add control points or we edit the white matter surface. Which one do we use? So you can sit here and say, is this an intensity problem? You see that the brain mask is sort of low in intensity there. You can try and add control points. Um, but in this case, the control points might do more harm than good. So when you have something where... Um, there's actually damaged white matter, and so it's not being included in the white surface. You don't want to put control points in the damaged white matter. Uh, same as, like, you know, that's where having the ASEG on might help you. You want to make sure you're not putting control points in what's actually subcortical gray matter, but looks like, it, you know, there, there's something wrong going there with the surfaces. Um, it's, it, since it's actually damaged white matter, telling free surfer that that's, no, that should be an intensity 110, it should be considered, you know, regular white matter. That can make things just go all sorts of wrong and surfaces will not understand where to go anymore. So if that's the case, um, using your white matter mask is going to be your best option. So I'm editing the white matter mask. And what I would do, um, again, kind of checking the different views. Actually, let me do that first. So 
so you can see the error here. And uh, I don't know if you've discovered this yet, but there's these little lines that tell you how to find your cursor. So there's this line here, and I go until I find that line because uh, I had put my cursor on the error, and so I could see it's still an error here. That's the original view we were looking at. And here. I see it there. Um, I'll come back to that. So I want to fix it. So I can fix it in, in any view, but again, like I said, I'm used to coronal view. Um, yeah. So I'll do it there, except that I lost it. <laughs> Other way. I clicked around in the sagittal view and then I lost my place, but we'll find it. Um, so I'm going to edit the white ma mask and, and I want to show you how much I would add and, and how I don't have to be so cautious. All right, so I clicked back in the, in the sagittal view and that was a quicker way to find it. So I put on the white matter mask, I do weak on edit mode, I might turn the soft surfaces off and on, I might turn the white matter mask off and on to kind of figure out where I'll, I would add it. Um, and I would choose the slice that's sort of easiest to begin on. So this slice is easiest because I can see there's just a chunk missing. So I'll add there. This slice was fine. So I'm going to go backwards. This one's like, oh, where should I go? It's a little tricky. So I'm going to skip it for now. I'm going to come to this slice where this surface should just be here. But it's not moving out because this one's dipping in a little too much because of this darkening of white matter. And this is where the advice I gave earlier about, well, you can add white matter, you know, in places where you're not necessarily certain and it won't necessarily mess everything up. I'm going to do that here. I'm going to add it out to here. That'll push the, peel, uh, the white surface out of it and it'll push the peel surface out of it. I could play it safe. I could add a little bit less. I could just do the one voxel if I feel <coughs> Worried about putting a little too much there. I don't want to push the white surface out too much. But I feel good about doing that. Hmm, maybe not so much. That one. So it was a quick fix. It was quick edit. I mean, we talked about it a little bit. But in the end, it was just a couple of voxels I had to add. And then when I rerun, I expect the, the surfaces to be pushed out a little bit and that error to not be there anymore. Um, where is it? There's one other thing I had to say about it, but I've forgotten that now, sorry. Um, oh, so this is important to know, is that with this error and um, with the error that you had in the tutorial, which I can jump to, it was the um, topological defect error. Sorry, my computer is a little slow. Um, when you add voxels in to the white matter mask, you're telling Free Surfer, no, I know better than you. This is the real thing. Follow this. Do what I say. Because uh, you might ask, well, Free Surfer got it wrong the first time. Sure, you added the white matter voxels there, but the, the intensities are all messed up, so why is it going to listen to you? And you'll notice how the, there's like different um, colors here in the white matter mask. There, there's red and there's yellow. And so if I hover over to yellow and you look at the values, um, actually, I'll click on the yellow, and then down here you can see it says 250, and if I click on the, <coughs> the pink, it says 110. Um, 250 is sort of in the free server code, whatever the, the topology fixer has fixed is set at the value of 250, so that way free server also remembers, hey, I already fixed this, don't forget it, keep it for all future things. And any edit you make also has a special value. So if I can get to the right slice, I think I need a new computer. It's gotten slower. You might remember this error from the tutorial, and you had to put in that one voxel. And so if I add that in, you see. Um, it has a, a value of 
255. Sorry, you can see it over here. So anything you add in has a value of 255, and that's how Free Surfer knows to take what you do seriously. So when you add stuff, um, you're going to be manipulating it, you're going to be telling it to, to remember this, and that's why this was a good fix for, for this error here. This was a topology fixer going crazy. It thought that this strand here was not actually white matter, but this handle, that it was a mistake. So it chopped off just a few voxels. Um, and so how do you prevent the topology fixer from going crazy again? But when you manipulate the white matter mask, you, you set this value to, you know, this voxel that has a value of 255 there, then it knows, all right, I was wrong. I'm not going to mess with that again. Same with the brain mask. When you, um, you can't add voxels to the brain mask, remember that, um, but you can erase voxels in the brain mask. When you erase there, it gets a value of 1, which is crazy because you just see these things disappear, but it's actually changing it to a value of 1. And so again, Freezer for knows this was erased, this was deliberate, so I shouldn't put anything there anymore. I shouldn't, or I should, you know, move the services so that they're in the right spot. Um, so, so that's the way that that works. Um, and so you'll find all sorts of tricks that you can do now that you know, like, okay, I'm manipulating this much. This is the kind of error where those tricks come in handy. Um, this is, I think this might be in the tutorial, but you may not have done it. Um, but if you have data where you have this issue where the, um, the surfaces are not going all the way into the, the calcarin sulcus, it's sort of a, a weird thing. But um, even though there's nothing there, just erasing so that it sets it to a value of 1 instead of 0, because it's 0 because it thinks it's CSF, but you set it to a value of 1, you force free server's hand, they're like, all right, I give up, you say it has to be this way, I'll actually do it. Um, and so you get little tricks like that to, to make it do what you want when you sort of understand that it, that's the way it's working. So my time is just about up, and I didn't get through the burn, <laughs> and that doesn't usually happen, so I'm sorry. Um, but what I, so that's why I jumped around. Um, so what I say is I continue to go through, and what you might see are skull stripping errors. That's sort of another common thing, and you have to either remove it or, or follow um, the instructions in tutorial about adjusting the watershed. And I would suggest as much as you can, find an automatic way to fix the errors. You know, if you, so again, when I give people five cases, uh, they start removing skull strip errors manually. They get to subject number three, and they're like, I can't take this anymore. And that's when I say, oh, remember that watershed method. And then they start to experiment with that, and then they realize, oh, I can run this one command on all these subjects um, now that I've sort of tweaked it to find the, the, the best value, and I don't have to do as much work. So when I give people those five subjects, by the end of the five subjects, by the end of that week, they're like, can, can I start over? And, and so that's normal. That's part of the practice. So, you know, you, you might have to go back and redo those five, but that's why you start with just a small chunk and don't necessarily have the expectation um, that you're going to get all 100 done right away or that you're not doing so well with these five, so you're doomed for the rest of the 100 that you have. Those five are, are the best way to learn about your particular subject and what needs to be done because it might be different from you know, what some other group might need to do or what you might have to do with some other data. Uh, so once you learn the best actions on those five, everything else will go much quicker. And then in terms of um, groups that have multiple people edited in the same data set, a lot of times I get questions about, okay, um, how do I make them do the same thing so it's consistent? And, and that's where the five subjects come up again. We have Five subjects, we all look at the same subjects separately, and then we meet and we talk about them. All right, what did we change? Oh, you found this error? Oh, I didn't even see that. Oh, you fixed it this way? I didn't do that. And then we're able to get on the same page and sort of create a list of things that are the priority for editing that we make sure we do as we go forward. Um, that's about it since I'm over time. <laughs> but <laughs> if you have questions, I can take one and just make Paul go faster in his talk, or Malta, sorry. Yeah? So the question is how to save the file. So you save the files in the GUI, so you would save volume, and it would save your brain mask and your, your white matter, or save point set as, and that's where you save control dot dat. And then when you rerun them, um, 
hold on, I know I have the slide for that. There, there's a, um, it's also on the, well, you can run this, or um, on the wiki, you can find sort of the, the steps where you would rerun them based on a step that you made, or where you made the edits. So the important thing to know with that is that, let's say you make edits to, by adding control points, so you're over here, and you also happen to edit the peel surface. Well, you don't need to run it twice. You just need to start at the earliest part of the stream. So you run this command, recon all auto recon 2-cp. It starts here, takes your control points into consideration, um, goes through the rest of the stream, and when it gets to, to this point, your edits are there in that file, and so it will act on them. So again, because it has the value 255 or 1, it knows you've done something, uh, and it will, will pick it up and, and fix what you've done. But that's actually a really important point. Um, sometimes when we get started, we have a tendency to, to you know, not be so sure about whether we really like this white matter mask that we edited, so we'll name it white matter, you know, wm.notsure2018.mgz, da, 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 and then try and rerun, and it won't work. You'll, you'll get your results, and you'll say, why does it look like nothing happened? Well, FreeServe is expecting that all the names stay the same. So it has to stay named as wm.mgz. Feel free to make a copy and call it wm.edited by this person on this date, as long as there's also a copy called wm.mgz. And then that's how you can do the, the comparisons. Any other questions? Yeah? So for the make all to work? The make all? Looking, yeah, it's just looking at the, at the date. If the halves are more different. Right. Yeah, so the question is the make all and, and, and uh, what is it looking at? So uh, FreeServer expects that all the files are processed in a certain order, so it looks at the timestamps. And if something's sort of, um, you know, if you edited that brain mask file, that's going to have a more recent timestamp than the files above it and below it. And so now it knows, oh, I'm just going to start the step that uses the brain mask because that file was most recently edited, and that will fix everything else, which is why it's a pretty nifty command. You don't have to... Figure out the is it auto recon two CP or what? Or so, this one's my favorite. Anything else? All right. <coughs> That's it, Malta. If you want to come up, sorry about that. <laughs>